joyous applause in 2003 as Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio is installed as the Diocese of Immigrants' newest leader. You have a great, good priest and bishop. Chosen to minister to the spiritual needs of close to 2 million Catholics in Brooklyn and Queens, many considered the former Bishop of Camden to be a perfect choice, not only because he's a native son of the tri-state area, but also because of his experience with migrant issues. In fact, his very first act as Bishop of Brooklyn was to speak at the Immigrant Workers Freedom Rally at Flushing Meadows Park. Ed Wilkinson, the tablet's editor emeritus, remembers his impact. Here he is, the bishop holding a copy of the tablet. <laughs> it was about immigration reform, and he wanted to go on the record right away that uh, he was, you know, was in favor of uh, newcomers coming to our, to our country, many of them are Catholics. That's because Brooklyn is home to nearly 950,000 foreign-born residents, representing almost 200 countries. A rich landscape where mass is celebrated in more than 30 languages. The bishop saying he took to his new diocese like a duck to water. I'm paddling pretty fast. Ever since, Brooklyn's ever-changing demographics continue to inspire the church to adapt, especially when it comes to the priesthood and vocations. It's more than just, you know, a poster or asking guys to consider coming to the seminary. After years of decline, the number of men entering the seminary is on the rise, due in part to the bishop's decision to open a house of discernment where men can consider becoming priests before they make a commitment. Something Bishop of Patterson Kevin Sweeney experienced firsthand as Brooklyn's one-time vocations director. I think we've seen under Bishop DiMarzio's leadership that when the um, support is given and the opportunities are there, that uh, young people are opening are open to uh, at least considering the possibility of hearing and responding to the Lord's call. Present. Father Lenardi is one of those young people who considered and answered the call. It's fundamental for me, for my vocation. He gave me a great testimony of a great bishop, of a father that is taking care of a, a shepherd that is taking care of his sheep. That level of service is central to the bishop's life's work, but one challenge in particular has taken its toll, the difficult issue of clerical sexual abuse within the church. Jasmine Salazar, the vice chancellor and victim assistance coordinator, explains how hard Bishop DiMarzio has worked. One of the first things that the bishop did when he came here was that he established the toll-free reporting line. Um, so that anyone who had an allegation against a member of the clergy, anyone representing the church, they would call the reporting line. And the reporting line was not filtered in any way. He made sure that there was a volunteer um, who was answering the reporting line that knew to take the facts of the report and immediately send the report to the corresponding district attorney's office. <laughs> As the healing continues and the diocese evolves, the impact of Bishop DiMarzio's lifelong work will forever be felt, especially among the faithful that have made his time as Bishop of Brooklyn and Queens so worthwhile. Oh, okay. <laughs>as Bishop DiMarzio prepares to pass the baton to his successor, his hopes for the Diocese of Immigrants continues to be one of a humble servant of God. Maybe to say that he was the people's bishop is a wonderful epithet if I had a right one. Um, so that would make me satisfied. if you're watching Currents News on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell to get updates to all of our newest content because we are putting your faith in the news.